Hi, my name is Daniel Blackburn. I am a soil microbiologist in Sultan Qaboos University. And um, I'm not uh, uh, an expert in worms, but today I'm going to talk to you about how to identify your compost worms uh, based on simple external features that you can find using the macro function from your camera. So I put this table together here and uh, it has some uh, characteristics of different worms. I'm going to talk a little bit about those uh, in detail. If you do not need any more explanation, you can just use this table. I can you know, even get up, get off the screen here so you can see the full table. Uh, Otherwise, just stick around, I'm going to explain these characteristics for you, but mainly, uh, usually what you see online is people uh, showing about uh, um, movement patterns, color, shapes, and behaviors, and how to identify your worms uh, uh, through this uh, color and shapes and sizes, but there are other simple features, for example, the position of the clitellum and the male pore, that will be a good tell about uh, if your worms are, are from one species or from another, okay? So uh, I'll start from the basics. Um, uh, let me show you some of the websites that are available for you to do this characterization uh, online. The first one, it's the one that I like the most, is the Earthworm Society of Britain, yeah? And they have this, uh, uh, web page which is the identikit. You will not find all these species from compost worms here, but you can find some of them. And if you enter here on this column, some of the features of these worms, you can then uh, uh, separate which one is more likely to be. For example, if you just add here that male pores is on 15, for example, and then this, uh, uh, this one is already excluded, for example, if the clitellum starts in 30, and they will start just saying, uh, um, you know, what are the most likely species that you have? Um, so you can just, uh, if you say the diameter is uh, five millimeters, uh, and then, so that, that will start um, separating those by these features. Otherwise, you can just, if you wanna just look at the, the characteristics of your, the worms that you think you have, for example, uh, if you have an Asenia uh, fetida, for example, or Asenia andrei, which will have the same features. Um, let me find here the Asenia fetida. You can just click on the Asenia fetida and you will see here all the features from this worm. And yeah, this is, too close. I will look. I will show this in a bit. Yeah, but you, otherwise, you can just see the the, the, the morphological features of your uh, of your worms, and then you can um, check if uh, your worm is really what it is. You know? the. Let me show you another web page. This is another web page here that is the the open access biodiver biodiversity data. It will give you about the the. Uh, world distribution of these uh, worms and where you're likely to find these worms on the environment. So if you find, if you are in the region where it's reported here, maybe the, the worms that you are isolating from the, the, the wild, they are um, uh, the, the, the ones that you think they are. For example, let's say uh, Asenia uh, Andre, for example, then you can just by googling them yeah and then you will click here and this will be the synonyms that you have here from the other names that you can be uh, given for this worm and then you have here also the world distribution of this worm so these web pages they are uh, very useful for for you there are others um, if the, the, your worms are not present here uh, and then you cannot find this characteristic then you have to go looking for other uh, uh, web pages that have these uh, 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 features of these uh, worms or um, the key of the taxonomic key for identifying these worms. So there are several taxonomic keys. Most of the keys are they, they lead you to up to family, but some of them uh, will have a um, uh, description of the, the, the worms by themselves. And you have, of course, uh, uh, um, scientific papers that will describe these worms uh, in more detail. 
and then from these papers you can grab those characteristics. I put up this table for you, uh, which summarizes the, the, the species that you have from uh, compost worms. Uh, there are eight species that are currently being used uh, for composting, as, uh, as far as I could gather online. And I will uh, give you some description about the features that you have to look after if you want to identify those worms based on on these yeah some of some of the worms are very easy to uh, identify some are a little bit harder starting from the basics uh, you have the clitellum this uh, normally this band that has different colors sometimes swollen uh, uh, jumping out uh, uh, from the body of the worm uh, the shortest uh, uh, part of the worm after the clitellum is uh, uh, what you call the, the head of the, the, the worm. And this head could have uh, uh, different features that I'm gonna talk a little bit, and the rest is the tail, yeah? So uh, this uh, scheme show you the head, and the head will have, the, the point of the head is the prostromium. The male pore usually is in between the, the clitellum and the prostromium, but for some worms, they will be after it will be in this position here. And then uh, this will be a telltale that you, you have one type of worm and the other one. So you can have a dorsal view of the worm and a ventral view of the worm. The male pore will usually be on the ventral view. Also, the tubercula purbetatis will be on the ventral uh, view of this worm and will be also an important uh, characteristic feature. So the, the um, uh, prostromium, uh, it can be in four types, but actually you need to uh, just uh, uh, know two of them, the epibolic and the tanibolic uh, prostromium, the ten epibolic and tanibolic head. And this is what they look like if you look really close to them, yeah? the epibolic and the tanibolic. Um, the male pore is just like a... a, a Sometimes it's not very visible. Uh, for, ex for the Isenia, for example, it's not really easy to see the, the male pore on the, on the segment 15. But uh, for some worms, they're very clear. For example, for the Indian blue um, uh, and Eudrilus eugenia will be very clear. Um, uh, the clitellum, oh, uh, is what I spoke before, this is the band that you have and they, they have a thickness of number of segments that uh, they, they occupy is very important. The, the segment of the worm in which it starts is very important. And the, 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 the tubercula purbetatis, which is present on the, on the ventral view of this uh, clitellum, you will, it, could ha it could be like two points, it could be a, a band, it could be a swollen band. In different uh, uh, situations. So if you if you are able to identify these tubercular purbitantes, then you can also it's help in your identification of the worms. The other feature that is important, uh, and if you can find that with your uh, macro lens, if you have a good camera or a good cell phone, like for example, the, with good cameras like the the Pixel, they will be very well defined, and you can identify this uh, um, uh, setting. Uh, but otherwise, it's hard to see the setae. So the, the distribution of the, 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 the setae uh, around the, the, the segment of the worm also will be uh, one of the taxonomic features of this worm. So let's talk about individually about these uh, different worms that we are currently using for composting. So the, the most common one, the red worm, the red wiggler, the, is the, the most common compost worm is... Uh, uh, there are two types of red wigglers. One is Asenia fetida, one, the other one is Asenia andrei. The Asenia fetida is the most, um, uh, the, the, the striped one, with the one the more clear stripes. And the one that is more reddish, pinkish reddish, uh, this is usually the Asenia andrei. Uh, but uh, there are hybrids between these. And there are many other colors that you can find varying from uh, yellowish, uh, um, pinkish uh, uh, and even um, uh, a little bit towards brown, yeah. But there's just, uh, and even uh, orange. So there's a huge variation in the Senia fetida, and the reason being that this this uh, species is uh, apart from being invasive in many countries, 
it, it's been cultured in, in worm compost in so many places and there, there are some uh, mutations and speciation of this. Uh, there are a lot of subspecies of this uh, Isenia fetida and Isenia andrei. Yeah? But the, the main difference between fetida and andrei would be the andrei would be less striped, yeah? the, the stripes are less clear, more reddish, whereas the Isenia fetida is the clearly striped one. Um, this is the, the Isenia fetida distribution worldwide. There's, of course, many synonyms for this, uh, the name of this species. This is the distribution from the Isenia andrei worldwide. So what about the features from this, uh, from this worm? Uh, you have uh, the, the, the seti spacing is closed. The male pore is on 15. The, the tubercular probability starts from 27 to 28 in the diameter uh, and length is usually up to 13 centimeters, not, not a big worm. Uh, the diameter would be between two and six millimeters. Yeah? In, the, in the tubercular probability is in thin bands. The, the type of uh, tubercular probability uh, will be in thin bands. Visually, you can separate the, the fetida from Andre uh, from the, the stripes. This is what they say a fetida looks like. The, the taxonomic, uh, the morphological features will be very similar between Fetida and Andre. Uh, this is what they, Andre would look like, less clear, the stripes. Yeah? Both of them will be having this uh, yellow tail. Yeah? The yellow tail will be something very characteristic from these worms. So if you have a, a, a red wiggler and it's not well striped, most likely you will have a Senia Andre and not the, the Senia Fetida. Now, when it comes for the European night colors, it is very similar on the features, uh, the morphological features uh, between the European night crawlers and uh, Asenia fetida and Asenia andrei. The European night crawlers, they are, um, they are Dendorbaena, they are not Asenia. Uh, they're best placed as Dendorbaena, although they have their Asenia synonyms. For example, the Asenia tensis and the Isenia veneta, they, they are best uh, named as Dendrobaena hortensis and Dendrobaena veneta. The big ones, the big European night crawlers that uh, you see a lot on YouTube videos, they are the Dendrobaena veneta species, not the Dendrobaena hortensis. Uh, this is the, 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 the tree of uh, similarity between a genetic similarity between the cytochrome oxidase gene between these, these two, uh, two worms. And actually they are very far apart from each other if you look at these uh, uh, mutations on these genes. Dendrobaina veneta being more similar to Dendrobaina octaedra. And Dendrobaina hortensis being more similar to Dendrobaina pantheri. Yeah? They are, uh, both of them are striped and they look a bit different from the from the Isenia fetida and Andre because the, the they're thicker worms and the thickness is not really well distributed throughout the body as the, 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 the body contracts and enlarges. So this varying thickness and, and the thicker worm it's um, also a telltale. The, they, they all have this bulging clitellum in the position of the clitellum and the male pore are very similar. So it's hard to tell from these uh, features if they are Isenia or European night crawlers. They are, of course, European species. And uh, this is where you will find them, the, 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 the Dendrobaina veneta species. The other species that you have some reports of being used in compost, but not very much and not very successfully, is the Lumbricus rubellus. Yeah? Lumbricus rubellus is... Um, it's an earthworm that has a, a habit to dig deep on the soil. So in shallow compost beans, they will not do well, but in deep compost beans, they will be able to compost quite well. The main telltale from the Lumbricus rubellus will be that the, the tail will be a little bit flattish. Yeah? The flat tail will be one of the, one of the features that is, uh, if you have some worms and they have this flattish tail, this is, of course, Lumbricus species. And here's the comparison between Asenia, Dendrobaena veneta, and Lumbricus rubellus. Uh, the head from Lumbricus will be a tiny bolic head. So if you go for your macro uh, function on your camera and then you 
have a close look on the head and if you find a anabolic head of course this is a way of separating them the Isenia fetida has a, a close set spacing where uh, the Nerobina veneta will be wide and lubriculus rubellus will be closed and the, the, the tubercular pubertatis will be uh, for the Isenia fetida will be thin bands and the Robina veneta will be swelling and lubricum rubellus will be thick bands yeah thick bands it's not really clear here on the on the slides but anyway uh, this is the distribution from Lubrinco rubellus. It's a European species, but really widely distributed uh, uh, worldwide. And uh, yeah, so this is not much to say about this species, not really commonly used uh, so much. Uh, the next uh, worm that we have to talk about is the uh, Amitas gracilis, which is uh, commonly called the Alabama jumper, but it's actually is the Chinese jumper. This is a Chinese worm, which is invasive in many countries. Uh, this is an easy worm to find and, and, and identify because of this snake-like movements that it has. It's a big worm, a very thick worm, with a very clear separation in color of um, the clitellum. And it, it, is, it goes for uh, the, the next group of worms that I, uh, we have to look at the, the male pores. They are not in between the head and the clitellum. They are after the clitellum and very close to the clitellum. So this is the next worms that I will talk about. They have all these same features where the male pores are after the clitellum and not in between the clitellum normally. And also the clitellum will be much closer to the head. The yeah? clitellum is 14 to 16, not uh, uh, around the, 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 the segment uh, 26 to 30, for example. Uh, so this is the 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 the, um, the clitellum is closer to the head, and the male pores are after the clitellum, not in between the clitellum and the head. So they will be clearer uh, male pores, uh, uh, easy to to identify. So uh, overall, this this species, if you if you uh, look at it, it will be a very easy species to um, tell apart. This is, of course, a Chinese worm that is invasive in many, uh, in all the continents, Australia, USA, Latin America, and um, Africa. Uh, the next compost worm is the Eudrilus eugenii, or uh, African night crawlers, commonly known. These worms also have the, the clitellum very close to the hand, and uh, the prostomium is uh, epibolus, uh, the, 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 the clitellum is cell-shaped, so it means that if you look in the, in, the, in the ventral side of the worm, you will see that the clitellum is less evident. So the clitellum is like, it goes around the worm, but not completely. Uh, and the, 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 the ventral part will be very clear that the clitellum does not go completely all around. Also, the, uh, as... Uh, Similar to Amita gracilis, the, the, the male pore is after the clitellum, and uh, that's an easy way to identify, yeah? Yeah, so, so the Eudrilus eugenii is an African worm, and it's also invasive in Asia and also in North America. The blue worm is very common and uh, mixed with the, the red wigglers. Uh, the, the scientific name is Peronyxis scavatus. Um, this also belongs to this group of worms where the, where the male pores are after the clitellum, not in between the clitellum and the head. And the male pores have this characteristic look where they have this uh, like a brackets, brackets shape. They are not paired in the, in the, the longitudinal sense, but they are uh, uh, um, paired like this, like brackets. And uh, this this reflex here is not really characteristic of the color of the worm. It, this is more of the light of the environment. The, 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 the clitellum is not uh, uh, swollen outside of the body of the worm. This contiguous with the, with the, with the, the, the surface of the worm. This is not a swollen uh, clitellum. Um, the, 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 the clitellum is very close to the head also from 13 to 17. So if you use these features, it will be easy to identify them. Uh, also, this worm is very invasive in many countries. Um, it's an Indian worm, but uh, this uh, also present in many countries. Um, 
so just for uh, as a resume I will uh, just uh, tell you this uh, leave you with this table the Isenia fetal insulin radar the red wigglers I have a swollen clitellum in the position about 24 to 26 to 34 not very different from the Androvaena species which is the European night crawlers uh, the, 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 all these will be stripy with the similar features from the clitellum and male pore. Uh, the main difference from the dendrobiana species will be that it will be more uneven on the on the distribution of the thickness. There are thicker worms and, and, and the dendrobiana veneta will be also a much uh, a longer worm, a very uh, a large worm if the, the adults can uh, reach uh, uh, very big sizes. Yeah. Oh, this is this is wrong here on this table. I need to fix this. If you look back on the on the on the other slides, it will be more clear. There will be the the the, the size will be uh, up to 155. Okay, but they can go even more than 20 centi centimeters. Amita gracilis. This group of worms here will be the worms that you uh, should think about. That the 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 male pore, the presence of the male pore is after the clitellum. And the clitellum is usually very close to the head, so this would be features separating those. And you can know, uh, use other uh, uh, other uh, taxonomic features um, um, uh, about the color, size, and, and if the clitellum is bulging, if the clitellum is saddle shaped. Uh, so you can use these other features for separating these worms uh, from each other. So this is something that uh, I wanted to bring for you guys. Uh, now, because uh, uh, usually uh, the, the the information online from YouTube is not uh, uh, re uh, not very remarkable in making the difference between different species, just making the difference between uh, the common name like red wiggler, European night crawlers, uh, uh, and uh, blue worms and African night crawlers, for example. Um, but there are some things that you can look in your worms, uh, uh, the position of the clitellum, which is just looking into uh, uh, your worm and counting the number of segments that you have before your clitellum starts. Uh, if you can find the, 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 the male pore will be very nice. Then you have to turn this worm around and photograph it play a little bit with the contrast and see if you can find the, the, the tubercular pubertatis and the, the male pore and then you count the segments and if you identify this male pore and the tubercular pubertatis that will give a good table. So about my worms, I've already figured that they are not in this table. So the next step for me will be to uh, uh, do the uh, sequencing of the cytochrome oxidase gene and I already ordered the primers for doing that and I will keep you posted for uh, these um, in the future. All right. So thanks. Thank you very much and I hope you enjoyed the video.